this morning, TJ woke up early, or I woke up late, really. He woke up at a normal time. TJ went to go to this place that we get croissants from now. It is the best croissants I've ever had. It's called Bolted Bread. And we have this now a weekend tradition where every weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, we pick some up. My favorite is the ham and cheese. I'm gonna just put these out. Brooks yeah. likes the regular. We'll give you one. So sure. good. This, wait, where's one's my favorite? This one's my favorite, ham and cheese. We're gonna go eat them outside. Hi. It's your time. Okay, I tried out. I need you to look at my under eye area. Yes. <coughs> So I went to the Sephora, I went to Sephora, they're having their big sale right now, and I bought this cream that you put on your under eye area and it like constricts it and makes the bags go away. Oh wow! Do they look different? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Really? Yeah, it looks good. I did it! Good. It's very, it it's weird feeling because it like freezes, it. it's like, I don't know, it like it makes the bag yeah. just go away. Yeah, so. Yeah. I had to put it on before makeup and then I put it on the concealer. Anyways, my under eye bags are usually pretty large. So I was testing this out and I kind of like it. I'm, I don't know. It was the first time I used it. So, all right. Anyway, we are going outside to eat this because it's going to be 85 degrees today and I'm ready. Spaghetti time. I am making this recipe that I made a couple weekends ago. It's this lemony asparagus pasta. And I just crave it all the time now, ever since it's gotten, gotten warmer. Only like a few ingredients, really. It's spaghetti, lemon, garlic, asparagus, red pepper flakes, olive oil, salt and pepper. I think that's it. Parmesan cheese. Oh, and I'll probably add um, some basil, some fresh basil. Brooks is outside swimming in this little blow up pool that we have. I'm gonna show you the pool. We have a bouncy house. TJ set up a projector screen out there. So, I pulled up the recipe. Do you like my phone case or my computer case? My phone case, my computer case are both from Berga who is partnering with me on this video. I have used Berga cases for years now. I like changing my phone cases seasonally. So I had this one for winter. It's very Christmassy. That's from Berga. This is another one, it looks like a little sweater. And they make my favorite phone cases in technology cases in general, AirPod cases, computer cases. But I've dropped my phone so many times and not a single crack, not a single issue with the camera. They have these like beveled um, edges up here that protect the camera. They are offering, you buy four, you don't pay for two of them. And then on top of that, you are getting a 15% discount with my code, which I'll leave up here. I'll also leave it leave in the description. So there are two main like types. This is the Elite, this is the Tough. The Elite has like, it's a little fancier looking. It has a gold bevel um, edge right here that protects the camera. It has a microfiber interior that protects the inside of the phone from being scratched. But then the Tough, has essentially two layers. So this is the, in, the first layer, this is the second layer. I get excited whenever they come out with like a new collection because they're always just so unique. They're so unique and they're so, usually you are compromising like the look for the protection, but this one genuinely has both together. Definitely check their site out. They are, they have over 200 designs to choose from and I've been using them for, mm, I wanna say at least two years now. So they are, the best. Let's open up this recipe and get started on this pasta.
I got one of these raised beds that I'm going to hopefully put together while Brooks is asleep right now. I decided to do a little Q&A in this video. It's been years since I've done any sort of Q&A and so much has changed in the last couple years. So, so I'm opening it up on Instagram. I'm gonna answer some on Instagram, some on YouTube. All right, first one. What did I study? So I went to a four year university. I went to NC State and I studied human biology with a minor in nutrition. And that is because I wanted to be a dentist and that kind of covered all the prerequisite classes I needed. But I literally dedicated like five years of my life to trying to get into dental school. I really only applied to dental school once, but um, I did not get in the first year that I applied and I then really, I need to get a microphone when I do these videos outside. Um, but I worked in an orthodontist office, a regular dentist office, a, I volunteered in all of these clinics. I worked at Invisalign, like corporate, um, and I, over time, I just kind of realized like, why am I why am I doing this? Like, am I really passionate about this or is it just because society kind of told me like, I need to go to college. I need to be a doctor of some sort to make a good living. And that is just, I realized that that was not the only path that I could go. I've always had an interest in like teeth and dental health, but it wasn't enough to really, I realized it wasn't enough to dedicate my whole life to. I think people who go that route that you have to you have to make sure that you're in it for the right reasons and I don't think I was in it for the right reasons so yeah if I could go back I probably would have studied something artsy and like graphic design um, interior design something like something videography photography like the things that I kind of have taught myself a little bit of since graduating that's what I would go back and study or textile I know NC State has a really good textile uh, program I probably would have done like something with that and I still love nutrition I all of the books I buy or read a lot of the books that I read now are about nutrition and brain health and so I still have that passion and interest um, but I just decided that I didn't have to have a career in that <laughs> to the questions what do you miss most about New York City I would say definitely I don't like driving so I love I loved being able to walk everywhere that's probably the number one thing just the walkability the public transportation I loved the bus I loved I loved taking advantage of the many different modes of transportation there and I can walk to the grocery store and the pharmacy here but I um, I definitely miss that about New York City. Um, and I know it's rare. Most of America is not walkable. So, um, but I mean, there's pros and cons with everything. And for now, I do feel like the pros outweigh the cons for us. How are you liking the slower paced North Carolina life? I love it. I, in New York, there was always something to go to, something to see, something to do. And I started to get to a point where our life felt so busy that we couldn't even take advantage of living in New York. We were living in New York, but not experiencing New York to its fullest. And that was a big eye opener to maybe we should live somewhere where it's slower. As someone who I need a lot of time to recharge and by myself, um, it felt like I, I didn't get a lot of that there. So yes, I do love the slower paced life here. And it's just nice to be near family. We have so many more resources, it feels like for us. Um, TJ and I have gone out to more on more dates here in three months than in New York when we had Brooks and tried a few babysitters up there, but I don't know, it just felt like it's different. It's different when you can just call up your family. Any desire for baby number two down the line? 
I, yes, I would love, I think one more maybe. Where do you find your inspiration? Oh my gosh. I find inspiration everywhere, everywhere. Um, driving down the street, I look for inspiration. I have a lot of books, a lot of design books. That's where I, I do get a lot of inspiration. I find inspiration from movies that feel like warm and comforting or nostalgic. Movies that make me like feel something. When I have like real downtime, I love Pinterest. And lately I have been using, I've been playing around with an AI design tool. Um, it's kind of creepy. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I, I, I can text or write what I'm envisioning and then it spits out an image and it's, that's kind of been a fun thing that I've been doing the last couple of weeks. So it's called mid journey. My friend told me about it. She sent me like these beautiful images of my potential dining room and I was like, wow, I need to learn how to use that. So I did, and it's kind of fun. How is Pearl doing? Pearl's doing really well. She got into the trash when we were cleaning up one night, chicken kebab skewer, so bad. It was so terrifying, um, but we immediately took her to the vet and they took it out of her stomach and they had to do surgery. So but she's doing well and she, um, she's loving having a yard. She's loving having more space in the house. Um, she loves going on walks here. There were times in New York where she would just stop but she hasn't really done that here. She loves to go on a walk. And I think she loves, um, I really wanna get her a sibling some or a, a dog sibling at some point. All right, a lot of questions about Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. And someone also asked, how are you affording to furnish your house? And I would say Facebook Marketplace. I, first of all, a lot of our house is not furnished. It's going to take a really long time and I don't wanna fill it just to fill it and have a filled house. So I really want to take my time, have things that I absolutely love, but Facebook Marketplace is the way to go. Like for sure, I've, I've found so many things since living here. Wicker chairs, I'll show you a picture of them. We just, and this table actually, um, picked up today. The chairs came yesterday um, and we, it's a Facebook marketplace. Lawn chairs, Facebook marketplace. I mean, I would not be able to afford to furnish this entire house, um, like buying new things. Like it, furniture is so expensive um, and houses are so expensive now, insanely expensive. So I've had to really just, I mean, I'm, I, kind of gravitate towards older furniture anyways, but yeah, I would highly recommend Facebook Marketplace. I've also been told estate sales and auctions are really good around here, so I'm gonna try and check those out. Does your husband still work in New York City? No, he does not have that same job that took us up there totally, and I can work remotely, so it, we felt very um, not tied down to any location, so it really just came down to we wanted to try living closer to um, family and in a, an area that we could see more of a future in. How do you keep all your outdoor stuff clean looking with all the pollen everywhere? It is not, it's not clean looking. This is actually kind of yellow right now. A table is over there is covered in yellow pollen. There's pollen everywhere. I just accepted it and um, I mean, we spray it down as much as possible, but it's a lot. I totally forgot about the pollen season here. It's intense. Looking to get married in Raleigh area. Any great wedding venues you know of? I think the Merriman Wynn house is the most beautiful house I've ever seen. And I think it's a good location. It's convenient. Can we get a walkthrough home tour as is? That it's, it's so messy that I don't know if I would want to do that. <laughs> it's just, embarrassingly messy right now, but maybe one day, I don't know. Um, how do you balance work life, work and life balance as a mother? So moving here has made a huge impact in how I would answer that question. We have so much more help here and people always say like, it takes a village. And I felt like in New York, I didn't have that. I had a community of friends, but I didn't have like a community of babysitters and like, like I didn't, I didn't really have 
I did not feel like I could easily call someone up and be like, hey, can you watch Brooks while we, TJ and I go get a bite to eat. So we did everything with Brooks in New York. How do I balance it? So I'm not really that good at it, to be honest. But I will say, on Saturdays, I try to not be on social media. The Saturdays are like my social media free day. So there's a time of the day that comes and if I'm on the phone, I try to get off. Like if I'm on a phone call, I try to end it by 5.30 or five um, to have that window of time before Brooks goes to bed. That's like a pretty important window of time for me. Uh, Facebook Marketplace. So back to Facebook Marketplace. Um, Facebook Marketplace tips for sourcing cute items. I have a, I wrote a blog post about this and the words that I use and I think it's kind of changed though since uh, we shifted seasons because I've mainly been looking for outdoor items and so I've decided that I really like white iron outdoor furniture so I have found a pretty good amount of things by looking up white wrought iron or one is Russell Woodard it's a brand or designer that um, if you look it up it brings up a lot of white wrought iron furniture that has a lot of ornate like floral swirls and designs lately I've been looking for like wicker chairs like the ones I showed you that I found yesterday I'll share some of the words that I use um, when searching for indoor items I like using the word antique French wooden walnut vintage walnut carved wooden carved detail or hand carved there's different styles i also like to like uh bring in so like victorian is one traditional english uh country sometimes brings some like french country and then okay so the key is also saving saving all of the things that you like even if you're not going to buy it because if it saves it then shows you in its algorithm it shows you a feed of things that it thinks you'll like, and that is really how I find a lot of good things. Which parts of your house are you keeping and changing? So we loved just about everything from about this house. There's There are definitely outdated parts of the house. Our primary bathroom, some things like about the backyard that we don't love, like it's very, it, it's drained very poorly and so it gets very muddy when it rains and it stays muddy for a long long time so that's something that we want to change overall and then just like little like the doorknobs i'd like to change i'd like to wallpaper just about every surface in this house or paint it nothing too serious though like we i don't i don't foresee us like knocking down walls or anything I do want to add walls like I there's a big bedroom upstairs that I might want to cut in half and make two rooms out of so one is the playroom one's another bedroom um, and then I also want an interior window wall downstairs to make it less open concepty but overall this house was is beautiful and I I remember walking into the open house and feeling like this reminds me of like a 90s rom-com movie house, like very father of the bride is like the thing that I thought of first. Um, I don't want that charm to like go away at all. I, I just want to add more, more and more charm until it's just like explosion of charm. Did, you, did I grow up where our home is now? No, I grew up about 30 minutes uh, I west. Up. I grew up about 30 minutes west um, in a smaller town. Well, I would Hi. say, and grow up, I, I've i lived all, I have was born in Florida and then we lived in Austin, Texas, and then we lived in uh, Hillsboro, North Carolina. Then we moved to Richmond, Virginia. And then we moved to uh, Pittsburgh, North Carolina. So I would see the Oh, this is a good question. Do you ever feel like you went backwards because you left the big city? I'm scared of this feeling. Um, so I was scared of that feeling too because, you know, people always say like you're moving to the big city and your careers are going to explode and flourish. For, for my situation, I've only seen growth since leaving New York City, which TJ, 
Yeah. One of these questions is, do you ever feel like you went backwards because you left the big city? I'm, I'm scared of this feeling. No, I think it, uh, it was a season of our life. And everything that we do is, in my opinion, everything that we do is a step forward. I don't think you take steps back. Yeah. I don't know if you could hear him because my microphone is non-existent, but um, he said it was a season of our life and every step that we take is a step forward. I also think that living in a city is not necessarily a indicator of growth. Right. You know, because right. people could live in a city for their entire lives, but be stagnant in that city, you know? Right. So... Right. Good point. I think it's only a, I think it's all in your head. I think it's all in your head. And I think if you leave a city, there's reasons that you're leaving the city and it's to position yourself in a way that is going to propel you forward, whether it's mentally, uh, career wise for your mental health. We talk about growth. We're not just individuals we're also like growing as a family. And like the, one of the factors we need to think about in growth is Brooks' growth. And Brooks' growth has Yeah, that's true. Since here. That's true. Brooks is thriving here. Um, he, he's grown so much and so he's just bloomed. Oh, did I try that estate sale app? So if you're looking for estate sales, I was told to use the app estatesales.net. I haven't, I've used the app, but I haven't actually gone to one yet. So there's so many other questions that I could answer, but I don't want this video to be super long. So I might do some more later. Again, if you are looking for a phone case, Berga is doing that promotion for, you can get four, but you only pay for two. My code, I'll put that code right here again. If you want to check them out, they have the most beautiful cases for your phones and computers and AirPods. So thank you so much for watching. And thank you for just supporting me. I've, it, this June will be 10 years since I created Pretty in the Pines, which is, it has not always been on YouTube. YouTube's kind of new for me, but it has been a, blog for 10 years on this June. But thank you for watching and I will see you next time.